Hello, and welcome to the weekly Free Shabbat AGAC Zoom call. Each week we gather together, the Jewish communities of all six GCC countries and our families and friends from around the world to hear a special message before Shabbat, light candles, hear it for Torah, pray and read a section from the weekly Torah portion. Today, our speaker is David Hirsch, who is the advisor to the Mohammed bin Rashid Library in Dubai, and we will share highlights I will share highlights from the library. The Association of Gulf Jewish Communities is the umbrella organization for the Jewish communities of the GCC countries that are building and enhancing Jewish life in the region. While each community is independent, we share a common goal and vision for Jewish life to flourish in the Gulf for the benefit of both residents and visitors. To stay updated on HJC events, please follow us on Twitter at that Gulf Jewish and visit our website www.gulfjewish.org. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom and praying for peace to prevail around the world. Thank you so much, Huda. And now we'll turn to Riva, who's going to light the Shabbos candles for us. Hi, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. It's always such a nice transition into Shabbat to see so many familiar faces who I include in my UAE Jewish community, even if you're not physically here. So I'm going to symbolically light Shabbat candles. Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu melech alam, Asher kishanu b'mitzvotah, V'tivanu l'alik l'shel Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much, Riva. And now we're going to head to Rabbi Levi, who's going to lead us in L'cha Dodi. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. בעזרת השם, אנחנו נעשה קבלת שבת ביחד, נקבל את הנשמה היתרה, הנשמה המיוחדת של שבת ביחד. לך דודי לקראת קלה, פני שבת נקבלה, שמור וזכור בדיבור אחד, השמיענו. אל המיוחד אדוני אחד, ושמו אחד לשם ולתפארת, ואלי תפילה לך דודי, יקרת קלה, פני שבת נקבלה, מקדש מלך יאיר מלוכה, קום יצאי מתוך אפיך. רב לך שבט בעי מקבך, והוא יחמול עלייך חמלה לך דודי, לקראת קלה, פני שבת נקבלה, בואי בשלום עטרת בעלה, גם בשמחה ברינה ובצעולה. תוך אמונה העם סגולה, בואי חלה, בואי חלה, היה איתו חמונה עם סגולה, בואי חלה שבת מלכתה, לך דודי, לקראת גלה ונשבת נקבלה, איי 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 איי, ליי דלי ליי דלי ליי ליי ליי, איי דלי ליי דלי ליי ליי ליי, איי דלי ליי דלי ליי ליי ליי, ליי 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 ליי, שלום עליכם, מלאכי השלום. מלאך עליון, מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. שלום עליכם, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי עליון. מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא 
בואכם לשלום, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי העליון. מלך, מלכי המלכים, הקדוש ברוך הוא. שבת שלום, אברהם, שבת שלום לכולם. אחר הצלחה. Thank you so much, Rabbi Levi. And now we'll turn to uh, Eli, who's going to introduce today's speaker. Uh, I would like to introduce a good friend of mine, uh, David Hirsch, who, have ser- who is serving as an advisor to Mohammed bin Rashid Library in Dubai, one of the most significant library are as a structure in the world. You will not miss it if you come to Dubai. Uh, David have served as a librarian for the Jewish Middle East, Central Asia, South Asia, and the Islamic studies at the University of California, Los Angeles. Um, David is very distinguished and also talented. He speaks about 10 languages. Uh, you cannot really, David speaks about uh, 10 languages. David spent most of his time in Cairo between the 70s and the 80s and went to American University of Cairo. Uh, and also he attended the uh, United Arab Emirates at Al Ain University. He attended uh, in Al Ain University. Um, David holds a BA in Oriental Studies as well uh, from the University of Pennsylvania. Also, uh, he holds a master's degree in, from the University of Chicago in, for the Middle Eastern Studies and worked uh, as a special coordinator at uh, UAE. Uh, Zaid Sheikh Zaid University, advisor to Abu Dhabi National Library, as well as uh, three times president of the Middle Eastern Library Association. Um, without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, David Hirsch. Unmute. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. No. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Anyway, uh, thank you, everyone. It's nice to nice to be here and see a lot of faces I haven't seen for a while, and to see some new faces. <clears throat> anyway, as uh, uh, Eli said, I'm the advisor for the Mohammed bin Rashid Library in Dubai. Uh, we are we are a new public library. We opened just last year, um, and it's uh, one of the uh, global initiatives of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. Uh, Rick, can you switch on? Next slide. There we go. Okay, so this is how our library looks. Uh, that's a night view. And uh, it's shaped uh, as a Quran stand. It's called a, a Rahal. And it looks like a, an open book. Uh, and it's about uh, 54,000 square meters, which translates to about 582,000 square feet. Next. And we have about uh, a total of 650,000 printed books in a total of nine different uh, uh, libraries within the building. We have a children's library, a young adult library, a public library, which we also call the general library. Then we have a special library with atlases and maps, another special library, which is media and all of the different arts. We have a special periodicals library, which includes all of our magazines and newspapers. We have an Emirates library, which includes everything that was either published in or about the United Arab Emirates. And we have a business library. Of course, in Dubai, we have to have a business library. Next. Okay. Okay. In addition to the libraries, we have a, a number of other facilities. We have an outdoor amphitheater, which we can use probably for two months a year when the temperature is um, below 30. Uh, we have a library cafe. It's a two-story, ca- two-story cafe. We have a lot of meeting rooms, which uh, community members are welcome to rent. Uh, we have a Treasures of the Library exhibition, which is what I'm going to be speaking about mainly, and that's where we have our old and rare books and manuscripts. We have a theater or auditorium, which holds uh, 580 people, and we are able to do uh, films, theater, uh, conferences, book launches, et cetera, et cetera. 
outdoors, we have something called the Languages Garden, which is 170 different languages uh, uh, showcasing His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's uh, views on uh, work productivity and uh, work ethics and uh, just general good citizenship. Uh, we have a dis digitization lab where we can uh, uh, digitize different books and make them available. Uh, one of them it, it does 2,500 pages an hour. And then we have temporary exhibitions, uh, which uh, we're, we just finished one. It was called the uh, Photography of the United Arab Emirates, beginning with photographs from, uh, from 1940 up until the present day. Uh, and we're now preparing a new temporary exhibition, which will include information about uh, Arab press from all over the world, from all of the different Arab countries, as well as from the Arab diaspora. Yes, they have their own diaspora. And all of the di diaspora communities have their own magazines and newspapers. Next, please. Okay, so in our treasure, Treasures of the Library exhibition, we have uh, items from the following groups. We have Islamic manuscripts uh, for, of all different subjects. We have uh, Quran fragments and hold Qurans. I'll be showing some examples of those. We have calligraphers tools. Arabic calligraphy is beautiful and uh, quite elaborate. So we have the tools that are used in order to uh, create Arabic calligraphy. We have books about Islamic heritage in Europe. That's a section which I like to call Crossroads of Civilization. It shows how uh, Arab civilization was transferred to Europe and how various items of Euro European civilization were trans transferred to the Middle East as early as the 15th and 16th, as early as the 16th century. Next. Okay, so here's an example of one of our old Islamic manuscripts. This is in Kufic script, which does not include all of the vowels or all of the consonants even. So if you know your Arabic very, very well, then you can read it, but otherwise it's quite difficult. And this particular piece is on gazelle skin. Next. Okay, this is an example of one of our illuminated Qurans. This one is from the 17th century from central India. Uh, and uh, before I go any further, everything in our special collections are, are their originals. They're, none of them are photocopies or even any other kind of copy or facsimile. They're all original hand done items. So this one is uh, from the Deccan in central India, and it's a beautifully done uh, uh, Quran. And it was donated by one of the wealthy members of the community in Dubai, not the Jewish community, of the of the, of the business community in Dubai. Um, it's from uh, Muhammad uh, Abdulaziz al Ghurair, and he is the, uh, the one who opened the first mall in Dubai, the Ghurair Center. Next. Okay, um, we have Qurans from all over the world. This particular one is from China. Uh, yes, there, are, there was a Muslim community in China, there still is. And uh, this one, um, we, we decided to include something from China because there's a verth, verse in the Hadith which says, look for, look for knowledge even if it be in China. Next. This is an example of an illuminated Quran. This particular one is from uh, northern India, from Kashmir, 19th century. And you can see how beautifully uh, illustrate, il illuminated it is. Next. Okay, this is the most valuable item that we have in the library collections. It is a pen case. And it's made of, uh, a di it's, the base is gold, and then it includes diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. And uh, it's worth about two million US dollars. Next. Okay, this is uh, one of my favorite pictures in the library collection. It's a, he's a scribe from Egypt. And uh, you can see uh, on his waist uh, sash, he has a pen case. And normally they would have a, a dagger but he has a pen case because, as you know, the pen is mightier than the sword. Next. This is another example of an illuminated manuscript. Uh, this one is called the Faras Nama. It's a treatise on horses, which talks about the care and feeding of horses. And this is uh, 17th century from, from India. Next. Um, we have a beautiful collection of uh, printed maps and also manuscript manuscript maps. This particular one is from 1482, and it's um, it was a donation from our chairman, Mr. Uh, His, His Excellency Muhammad al Mur, and the blue color is made out of uh, crushed lapis lazuli or lapis lazuli. I may not be, may be pronouncing it wrong. So we have a beautiful collection of of uh, antiquarian maps. Next. Um, we also have things from Western cultures. So this particular item is, um, this is Shakespeare's um, uh, Comedies, Histories, and Tragedies in one volume. It's the second folio 
Unfortunately, we don't have the first folio, but this one is from 1632, which also isn't too shabby. Next. I'm going fast because I only have eight minutes, so please forgive me for speaking quickly. Uh, we also have uh, beautiful items of American literature, such as these two uh, of Mark Twain's uh, uh, writings. These are both first editions, uh, Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. Uh, also from American literature, we have, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Nathan, uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe is uh, the, the Raven. We have an autobiography by Benjamin Franklin, which is written in French, because Benjamin Franklin, as you may know, was the ambassador to France. We also have uh, beautiful item, examples of British literature, uh, such as uh, Pride and Prejudice, first editions, and um, let's see, what else? Uh, some you know, beautiful serial uh, editions of uh, uh, Charles Dickens, such as uh, uh, David Copperfield, and it was issued originally as a, a weekly supplement to the London newspapers. Okay, uh, next. Uh, this is an example of uh, one of our, we have a collection of beautiful book bindings. This particular one is uh, bound in tortoise shell, and it's a New Testament with the, and the Book of Psalms from 1882 in Amsterdam. Next. Um, this is an example of a recent binding. It's a 20th century binding from Paris done in an Art Deco style. Next. Uh, we also have our section, which we call uh, um, uh, Tolerance, which includes items of different religions. Dubai uh, welcomes the different religions. And we have uh, examples uh, from Judaism, which I'll show you in a couple of minutes, and things from Islam, also things from Christianity, as well as uh, different Indian groups, such as the Jains. And this particular one is uh, the first English language printing of the Quran from 1649, and we have that in the library. Actually, the Quran was published in English before it was published in Arabic, in print. Next. Okay, so this is an example of a uh, 16th century uh, gospel, but this is the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in Arabic, and it was published in Rome in 1590. Next. Uh, and this is the Pentateuch, the Hamisha Chum Shei Torah, uh, Torah of Moses the Prophet uh, in, in, in Arabic, and it's from 1622, published in Leiden in the Netherlands. Next. And finally, our sole Hebrew manuscript. This is a, a manuscript of uh, um, Mishnah Torah on Maimonides, and it uh, was hand done in Yemen in the 14th century. Uh, next. And this is the, the last item I think that I'm going to be showing you. This is a polyglot uh, Psalter, Book of Psalms, in seven parallel languages. Um, and it was published in 1516 in uh, Genoa, Italy. And it's also interesting because in one of the, the footnotes, it's a printed footnote, it uh, talks. Uh, it gives a description of Columbus's voyages to to the New World. Okay, and I think that's uh, that's the last one. I don't know if we have time for a couple questions. I'm happy to answer. If we have, if we don't have time, then thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, and and thank you to Rick for uh, thank you Rick for the, the, the presentation. For the hosting. Yes. Excellent. I had trouble with my with with it last time, so I'm very glad that Rick was able to help out and help me with some last minute editing as well. Wonderful. Um, do we have any questions for David? Okay. Well, thank you very much, and uh, that was really very inspiring. And I think that those of us uh, who are who are in Dubai should definitely pay it a visit, and uh, those who travel. Um, to visit us, please come and, and stop by as well. And now we'll turn to Rabbi Sarna, who's going to both give us a Dvar Torah as well as we uh, read from this week's Parsha. Thank you so much, Ariella. It's so wonderful to see everybody um, everybody on the Zoom. Uh, I just wanted to add to what David said. Actually, at the, at the Louvre right now, there is a temporary exhibit up on the origins of monotheism with, I, I can't even describe to you, countless um, manuscripts, both Quranic and from and uh, and Christian and, and and Jewish pieces of the Dead Sea Scrolls and all the way up through the ages. Um, it's mostly on loan from the Louvre in Paris and the uh, Bibliothèque Nationale de la France, the, the National Library in France. I've never seen anything like it anywhere. 
um, it's it's truly amazing. Um, the other the other thing that um, I noticed this week, actually last, which is uh, um, different but still very powerful, um, last Saturday night on the second floor, can the garden, the mezzanine level of the Abraham family house, there's a cafe that opened, and um, and it's very it was kind of kind of amazing to see so many people coming together just uh, casually sipping coffee together but within the context really in between these three buildings the mosque church and synagogue and in fact uh, ever since the opening there's been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people coming out every evening from four to ten and it's kind of beautiful to see Jason and Riva and I had, had some time there earlier this week and um, before it almost started raining and and uh, it's just truly amazing and I had a concern before coming that because of the trying times that we're in that we would see diminished attendance here at the Abrahamic family house fewer people at the mosque fewer people at the church but it's not happened in fact the attendance is as strong as ever which has really given me so much hope and I just I wanted to pass it along to you um, let me just say a few words about the parsha, and then I'll do a little bit of reading. If you look, read the opening verses closely as we're about to read in the Hebrew and the English, you'll notice that Yitzhak and Rivka, Isaac and Rebecca, uh, they are ostensibly both praying for the same thing, but not at the same time, um, not at the same moment. And they're not really aware of the outcome of each other's prayers, really. Rebecca, when she goes, Isaac prays for her to become, for her to conceive. And once she's conceived, she prays to have better understanding about why it is that he feels so agitated. And in fact, when she receives a response from God that there are actually two nations within her and that there will be constant strife between them, it's not clear. It doesn't say that she passes this information along, the results of her prayer, to Yitzchak. And in fact, the Natsiv, Natali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, says that this is the heart of the issue. Yitzchak and, and Rivka, Isaac and Rebecca, throughout their entire marriage, as far as we can see, they only speak once. And that is already after the conflict has gone so far. And, and um, Rebecca has to persuade Isaac to send Jacob away. But really through these moments where they're, even though they are, praying for the same thing in a grand scale, in the big picture, they are not really speaking to each other and aligning. What we've seen over the course of this week, this past week, is just how powerful it can be when Jewish people come together in a focused way, in an aligned way, and we pray together and we open the gates of heaven together and, and, and receive whatever bounty we can receive from it. Um, I'd like to read, read to you now the opening verses of our parasha, and I think Rick is going to do the translation. So, so, Isaac sent for Jacob and blessed him. He instructed him, saying, You shall not take a wife from among the Canaanite women. Oh, go to Pada and Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take a wife there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May El Shaddai bless you, make you fertile and numerous, so that you become an assembly of peoples. May you and your offspring be granted the blessing of Abraham, that you may possess the land where you are sojourning, which God assigned to Abraham. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, and now I'll turn back to so, Rabbi Sarna, who's yes, going to read Yes, Rabbi. I'm going to read. What I'm going to read is the is the Mishaberach Lishvuim, the prayer for those who are held captive. 
משבח אבותינו אברהם, יצחק ויעקב, משה, יוסף, משה ואהרון, דוד ושלמה, הוא יברך וישמור וינצור את נדרי צה"ל ושבוייו ואת כל אחינו הנתונים בצורה ובשביה. בעבור שכל הקהל הקדוש הזה מתפלל בעבורם. הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא רחמים עליהם ויוציאם מחושך וצל מוות ומוסרותיהם ינתק ומצוקותיהם יושיעם וישיבי מהרה לחיק משפחותיהם יודו לאדוני חסדו ונפלאותיו לבני אדם וקרי עמם מכל שכתוב ופדויי אדוני ישובון ובאו ציון ורינה ושמחת עולם על ראשם ששון ושמחה ישיגו ונעשו יגון והנחה Those redeemed by the Lord will return They, were, they will enter Zion with singing and everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Benomar, Amen. Thank you very much, Rabbi Sarna. And now I'll turn to Riva, uh, who's going to read the prayer for the GCC. But before she does, just a quick reminder to please join us. Same time, same place, same Zoom link next week. And for those in the States, we wish you a happy Thanksgiving. The AGJC prayer for the welfare of the governments of the GCC. May the Holy One who gives salvation to kings and dominion to princes, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, who delivers God's servant David from the evil sword, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, bless and protect, guard and help, exalt, magnify, and uplift, His Majesty the King of Saudi Arabia, His Majesty the King of Bahrain, His Majesty the Sultan of Oman, His Highness the President of the UAE, His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness the Emir of Qatar, and all their crown princes. And may the Supreme King of King, in God's mercy, put a spirit of wisdom and understanding into their hearts and the hearts of all their counselors and officials to deal kindly with us, the house of Jacob, and all the people of this land. Be their shelter and stronghold and let them not falter. In their days and in ours, May these lands be blessed with stability, prosperity, and peace. May this be God's will, and let us say, Amen. Excellent. Amen, and wishing everybody a Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Jason, welcome to Bahrain. Shabbat Shalom. 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 Shabbat Shalom.